The Philips 806 OLED delivers outstanding picture quality, which I shall demonstrate at some point in this video. The Philips 806 uses a conventional OLED panel from LG Display, as verified by the spectral power distribution and also the subpixel structure which is unchanged from last year in the 65 inch screen size. On this moving quantization test pattern from Stacey Spears of Spears and Mansell fame, near black gradation wasn't the best, and there's also visible flashing artifacts as the test pattern pan horizontally, suggesting that Philips is not deploying effective countermeasure to tackle the near black chrominance overshoot which has affected OLED TVs since 2018. These flashing artifacts will be more obvious in low bitrate content such as this heavily compressed broadcast of Game of Thrones. At the time we filmed this video in October 2021, the promised Kalman support wasn't available yet. However, even after a quick manual calibration, color accuracy was excellent, with an average delta error of below 1 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured and no inaccuracies exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Error 3. As a result, general colors including skin tones looked supremely natural and cinematic in real-world content. When displaying 24 frames per second films, setting motion styles to pure cinema was necessary to engage 5.5 pull-down and eradicate telecynic judder in slow panning shots. And if you are one of those who are sensitive to the inherent 24p judder, which is made more obvious by OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time, you can set motion styles to movie, which will apply a small dose of motion interpolation to smooth things out. However, bear in mind that this will introduce some soap opera effect or SOE, however slight, and also interpolation artifacts in complex moving sequences. With motion styles disabled at higher frame rates, motion resolution came in at the sample at whole baseline of 300 lines. Because of the MediaTek chipset used, you can see some interpolation artifacts at the 170 level, even though motion interpolation is meant to be disabled. However, we saw no ill effects in real-world content. Engaging motion styles will increase motion resolution to the traditional OLED ceiling of 650 lines. And new for 2021, the Philips 806 is also equipped with black frame insertion, which is labeled as fast motion clarity in the picture menu. Engaging fast motion clarity together with motion interpolation allowed the 806 to reach 1080 lines of motion resolution or even higher. And unlike the implementations from rival brands, going up the intensity scale for higher frame rate SDR content seemed to brighten the picture slightly rather than darken it even further. Note that fast motion clarity black frame insertion shouldn't be used for HDR content because it will darken the HDR picture too much, causing the tone curve to significantly undertrack the PQ standard. Where the Philips 806 shines is with 50Hz content, we didn't see any frame drops or micro stutter with or without frame interpolation engaged, which is a welcome relief compared to how other TV brands generally deal with 50Hz content. Philips is famous for being aggressive with its video processing, and indeed, when we displayed this SNPT RP123 test card in 576i, the Philips 806 exhibited more ringing and fizziness than rival TV manufacturers. Now, with high-quality content such as this 1080i broadcast from BBC HD, Philips upscaling can yield a perceptibly sharper picture. But when it came to bit-starved content with lots of compression artifacts, the upconversion method on the Philips 806 can cause compression artifacts to become more obvious and noisy. In terms of video mode interlacing, Jackie's suppression was decent, with mild jagged edges showing on the second bouncing bar. The 806 passed our film detection test with flying colors, even though there's no film mode on board, with the TV successfully detecting and processing both 3.2 and 2.2 cadences from the HQV benchmark disk. On this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Munsell HD benchmark disk, 
the Philips 806 also passed full chroma bandwidth without needing to engage game or monitor mode. Bright uniformity was excellent on our 65-inch Philips 806 review sample, with no dirty screen effect, bending or color tinting on full field gray slides. We used this very bright sequence from our planet on Netflix to check for Venetian blind effect, and are pleased to report that the horizontal lines are extremely faint to the point of being non-existent. We generally had to look very hard to see it, so it certainly did not bother us in real-world viewing. Turning our attention to dark uniformity, our review unit fared better than what we've seen on WRGB OLEDs in previous years, with some vertical banding and vignetting along both sides of the screen. For HDR, peak brightness measured 700 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 120 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 99% UV, while right 10 to 20 was 76%. Due to OLED's pixel level light control, HDR presentation always took on a polished appearance. With HDR perfect set to minimum, the TV will adapt its tone curve to 1000 nit or 4000 nit max CLL, allowing the very bright detail on Ben Affleck's white shirt to be tone mapped and resolved. However, if a 4K Blu-ray disc doesn't contain max CRL metadata, for example, this movie pan, you will need to manually set HDR perfect to medium to recover more specular highlight detail. The Philips 806 supports TV LED Dolby Vision, but out of the box shadow detail in Dolby Vision mode was a bit crushed, requiring some adjustment to the picture setting to restore shadow detail. Native 10-bit gradation was decent but not class leading. Engaging MPEG artifact reduction did not smooth out any in-content posterization. For gaming, input lag measured 15 milliseconds at 60 frames per second and 6.5 milliseconds at 120 frames per second, which is a massive improvement over last year's 805 and 935. Out of the four HDMI inputs, HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 are full bandwidth 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 ports, as verified by the excellent Radio 7G signal generator. Auto low latency mode and VRR, including AMD FreeSync Premium, are supported, and the TV can even do Dolby Vision gaming up to 60 frames per second. But bear in mind that you have to go into the Xbox menu and drop refresh rate to 60Hz before starting a game to trigger Dolby Vision. Philips TV has provided an HDIG setting in the HDR Perfect submenu, which will disable tone mapping and provide a hard clip as per HDIG guidelines. The clipping threshold has been set at 650 nits for both Max TML and Max FFTML. For some reason, there remain some shadowing on this checkerboard HGIG pattern on the Xbox, but fortunately we didn't see any ill effects in actual gameplay. With VR or AMD FreeSync Premium engaged, VR flicker was unavoidable in some games, because this is an OLED panel issue which can only be addressed by LG display on future panels. Despite using the same MediaTek MT5895 chipset to provide HDMI 2.1 functionalities, the Philips 806 managed to deliver full 4K 120Hz resolution, but only under certain conditions. You will need to set HDMI Ultra HD to optimal, meaning that you will lose ALM, and then 4K 120Hz resolution is only fully realized in monitor mode, which will also benefit from 444 Chroma. Based on the display HDR test pattern, we think Philips TV may have had to sacrifice some near black gradation to achieve full 4K 120Hz resolution in monitor mode. According to the company, Full 4K 120Hz resolution and 444 Chroma is more important for PC users, which is why they are only implemented in monitor mode. Note that on a lot of the HDR picture presets including HDR game mode, for some reason the default light boost setting is medium. You will need to manually switch it to maximum just one time, 
and also turn light sensor off to unlock the highest peak brightness and also the most accurate PQ UTF tracking that the TV is capable of. This video is sponsored by Box, the online technology store. Visit box.co.uk for the best deals on TVs, soundbars and all your other technology needs. In terms of design, the Philips 806 is certainly very attractive. With slim panel and bezel, thanks to OLED's self-emissive display characteristics which doesn't require a backlight. The screen is supported on a pair of feet, and Philips TV has been thoughtful enough to make each feet two-tone. So you can choose to either show a darker chrome or a brighter silver finish peeking from beneath the panel. Or you can even choose to show the darker chrome version on one side and the lighter silver on the other, sort of mix and match, like buying a meal deal at Tesco. Even though the Philips 806 is not blessed with a Bowers & Wilkins sound system found on the company's OLED Plus range, sound quality of the TV was very good considering its price point, with impressive bass and clear highs. Mid-range sounded a bit hollow to our ears, especially when strained, but there's certainly convincing soundstage and resolution, which we rarely get from an OLED TV without premium sound on board. To tackle OLED burn-in, Philips TV has implemented a number of countermeasures on the 806, including a screensaver after some period of inactivity. There's also pixel shifting, which moves the picture on screen by a few pixels here and there to soften the hard edges of image retention. But unlike on other OLED brands, you can't turn this off on the 806. So from time to time, you may see the black bezel on one side of the screen being larger than the other side. The Philips 806 also inherits the logo detection dimming function from last year's 935 which worked to dim down static elements without affecting the rest of the picture. But we generally found the high setting to be too aggressive, so for normal use, we would stick to normal, or even turn it off altogether if the dimming is bothering you. And of course, we can't conclude a review of a Philips TV without talking about Ambilight. The one implemented on the Philips 806 is the most comprehensive four-sided version, but we found the default brightness value to be too bright, and so would be inclined to lower it to avoid drowning out shadow detail, especially in HDR mode. To sum up, the Philips 806 is a solid OLED TV which delivers accurate colors after calibration, strong video processing, low input lag, full 4K 120Hz resolution in monitor mode without the help of a co-processor, impressive sound quality, and integrated Ambilight bias lighting solution, and so it earns our highly recommended award. Compared to rival OLED TVs competing in this price bracket, such as the LG C1 and the Sony A80J, the Philips 806 unique selling points are its Ambilight technology and superior audio quality, but the 806 also tended to exhibit more near-black flashing artifacts, not to mention more posterization due to the lack of a decontouring filter. Two issues which incidentally are addressed by the dual-chip P5 engine on the step-up OLED Plus 936. We haven't had the opportunity to do a side-by-side -side comparison video involving the Philips 806, but here's our video comparing the LG C1 and the Sony A80J, two of the 806's closest competitors.